Absorption. We've looked at how easy it is for alpha, beta and gamma to ionize atoms, but how does this affect how far they can travel? Well, if we look at how far they'll travel in air, we find that alpha will only travel a few centimeters, beta will travel a few meters, and gamma will travel several kilometers in air. We'll look at why this is the case in a moment, but first let's look at what we would need to use if we were to stop each one in the minimum distance possible. So, we have a radiation coming from the left side of the screen, and we'll place a material in the middle of the screen and see if that stops it. First off, we'll just place a piece of paper in the middle. As we can see, the paper stops the alpha, but both beta and gamma go straight through. So just a thin sheet of paper will stop alpha completely, as would any other thin material like your clothing, for instance. Now let's place a piece of aluminium foil a few millimetres thick, just after the paper. So this time we see the alpha being stopped by the paper, the beta and gamma going through. But this time the beta is stopped by the aluminium, with the gamma still getting through that. So we now see that beta is stopped by a few millimetres of aluminium. Next, we need to try and stop the gamma. We need something very dense or very thick. In fact, we find we either need several centimetres of lead or a few metres of concrete to completely stop gamma. So let's just put in a few centimetres of lead. Yep, we can see that stopped the gamma. OK, so why is it that alpha is stopped so easily and gamma is so difficult to stop? Well, it's all about ionisation again. Let's get rid of the paper and aluminium and zoom in on the lead. So we see lots of lead atoms all tightly packed together. When the atoms change colour, that will mean they've been ionised. So let's send in an alpha. Now we should remember that alpha is really good at ionising. So it loses all its energy, causing lots of ionisations in a very, very short distance. It didn't get very far along the screen at all. Now let's look at beta. Now beta will do roughly the same number of ionisations as alpha. But, as we remember, it's not as good at ionising as alpha, so we see it travels further across the screen to cause the same number of ionisations. Now let's look at gamma. Now gamma works differently. It needs to collide directly with an electron, and then it's completely absorbed. So, because electrons are so small, gamma will travel a really, really long way before this happens. In fact, it's going to go right across the screen without doing it. So this is why alpha has the shortest range in air and is absorbed by paper. It's because it's so good at ionising. So what are the key points to remember here? Well, we need to remember that alpha has the shortest range in air, only a few centimetres, and it's stopped by paper. Beta has a range of a few metres in air and is stopped by thin aluminium. And we also need to remember that gamma has the longest range in air, a few kilometres, and can only be stopped by thick lead or several metres of concrete.